the word polar vortex. Find an old uncle, lost relative, that's south of the Mason-Dixon line. And get out of Dodge. Yeah, that's... Good morning. I like this attitude of worship because what the Lord asked me to share this morning is kind of a devotional. Uh, it comes from a incomplete book that I started writing about seven years ago. But the Lord said, just pull from the book. And everyone who's here needs to hear it, which is a great thing. Now, continuing in this atmosphere of worship, I don't want this to be heavy at all. So I want you all to stand up and repeat after me. Today is a good day to have a good day. Have a good day. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Now that we're loose a little bit. You could use that, by the way. That's not in the book, and I haven't copyrighted it yet. Put it on a T-shirt, you know, bumper sticker, any of that yet. So feel free to indulge as you'd like. I have to share one this is kind of, you're, what, you're actually witnessing a miracle. Um, uh, I've been told I'm legally blind, I don't receive that, but I haven't really been able to read for about four years too well. But Wednesday in Orlando, well actually I was in Titusville. I had an uh, opportunity to reconnect with some good friends and they prayed for me and some of my ability to read has returned. So I'm going to try to get through this without uh, cracking too badly because I understand, you know, what's going on here. Anyway, it's about worship. I've been an ambassador for worship for many, many years, like going back to 1976. And I did the math, but I'm not going to repeat what the sum is. <laughs> anyway, you know, the term worship and praise, I, I want to implant this in your heads and your hearts. Praise should be, should be spelled P-R-A-Y-S. Worship and praise. Praise and worship. P-R-A-Y-S. So when you hear the term praise and worship or worship and praise, think about that because that's how we should be approaching the Father when we go to worship. It's very intimate and it's very special. And like the song said, I got on my knees and cried holy. That is the doorway to true worship. Whether you physically get on your knees or in your spirit, you get on your knees. You have to approach the Lord that way and cry out holy. Now there's a form of worship that is coming upon the earth 
called prophetic worship that's already here. But it's going to become far more important because I believe that the glory of God is about to sweep across the world because before Jesus can come back, there has to be a, a billion soul revival. Now this may be news to some of you, but there's several events in the prophetic clock. It hasn't happened yet. And it's going to. But one of those things, and the main one, is the end time harvest. We're, we're right on the precipice of it. Right here, right now. And what's going to happen is when the glory of God hits, there's going to be a new sense of worship, a new intimacy with God. And people are going to see very clearly God, the enemy. Truth, lies. Righteousness, sin. So the the word, and it's not an admonition, but it is. This is more than an encouragement. Is that we've got to write and create worship that is holy and acceptable. It's not it's not about the vertical stuff, you know, like popular love songs and you know, man to man, boy to girl, all that fun kind of stuff. But it's this way. And I know you all know this. This is basic. But there's something in here the Spirit wants to plant in everyone in this room because you're charged because you're here at this point in time on this planet is to worship the Lord and show other people the way to true worship just like King David did. And there's some things that we need to pay attention to. Now, some of us know Psalm 138, 1 through 6. Anybody in this room familiar with that? Right off the top of your head, you know exactly what it says? Great. Because in the New King James it says, I will praise you with my whole heart. My whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all, your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of God. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly. But the proud, he knows from afar. So there's a couple of things. You know, as I mentioned, it's not horizontally, laterally from man to man, but quite differently. Worship is sacred and vertical. Upwards towards God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The focus is entirely on God. Entirely on God. And thanking Him for what He has done by speaking into our lives by His living Word, who is Jesus. The spoken Word, which is the Holy Bible, 
and he's spoken to us by all the answers to prayer we've ever received. This is very simple. I use the word uncomplicated, but I just call it what it is. It's very simple. We don't have to mess it up with our human thinking. And the pure response is from a heart that's thankful and all loving and benevolent. God does nothing in darkness because he is pure light, which is love and good. Darkness is bad, so it says. Those are the principles that when we come into worship, that's what we need to be focused on. A thankful heart. Thankful that we can hear from God, from what Jesus, and through the Spirit, tells us. Through the written word. And through his answers to prayer. That's how God interacts with us, and our worship is a response back. Now, Psalm 22.3 in the NSAP says, Yet you are holy, O you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Mm. Now, I've looked the word studies up in this, and it literally means God inhabits the praises of so when we worship and praise the Lord, he's in it. And here's, here's the big takeaway. With a billion souls added to the kingdom of God on earth, because they will have responded properly to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, there's going to be this hunger, hunger and thirst after righteousness like this world has never, ever yes. known. Yes. And it's going to be our job yes. to listen to the Spirit and in partnership with the Spirit create songs of worship and praise that are going to fill that hunger and thirst for righteousness for a billion new souls. It's not about selling records. It's about glorifying God. And believe me, I've spent a lot of time personally in the music industry, in Christian radio. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying that there's a paradigm shift that's yes. coming. Yes. I think it's already here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the point is, is we need to have our creative talents in our spiritual ears listening for the voice of the Lord and praise him and put these things on record. Okay, that's an old phrase. But anyway, <laughs> you know, in the digital format. <laughs> yeah. But we need to put these things out there into the atmosphere because there's going to be such a hunger and thirst and we who are mature it's on us to share what we know because you know with a move of God like this that's coming there's going to be a counter swing there's going to be something to make there's going to be an imitation something cheap but an imitation but we want to deliver the real thing. Yeah. And I've said it before for several years to this group of creative folks. Our charge is to create the sound of heaven on earth. Yeah. Yeah. And the cool thing about it is, is that the Spirit wants to do this. Yes. You just have to be open to it. And make it something important. Make it a priority because the body of Christ needs it in order to stay strong because look at it this way. Some of us are not going to be here 
in 10 years or 20 years. But a billion new souls, they're going to be here for 50 years. And they're going to face things and they're going to be able to do things that we've never done. So we need to encourage them and strengthen them and lead them to the throne room where we get on our knees and cry holy. It's pretty simple. So that's kind of the word of the Lord for you all this morning that he asked me to share. And I know you're up to the task, or else you wouldn't be here. You got to, like Gene says, you got to have faith. Amen. That God has called you to this. And, you know, we're all ambassadors. And I'm just real, real happy to see y'all listen to your music and encourage you because it's very, very edifying for us. Just imagine what it's like, going to be like in the body of Christ worldwide. You've been on the road, David. You know what people are like. You know how hungry they are. You know how deceptive the world is. And we've got to, we've got to be the antidote. Now, I really don't know how to transition into the next part other than to say, well, take it to heart and just know that the Lord wants to use you to do this great thing. He really does. Worship and praise. P-R-A-Y-S. Praise the Lord, Gene. I'll let you do the housekeeping stuff because it's inappropriate at this moment in time. <laughs>